Let's go ahead and get started, folks. Uh, welcome, good morning or afternoon, everyone, wherever you may be. My name is Paul Mascarenas. I am the uh, Assistant Librarian and Academic Resources Coordinator or Manager here at CSU Global. We definitely want to welcome you to our uh, webinar, Library Research Skills, Tips and Tricks for Searching, presented by the CSU Global Writing Center and Library. Our speaker today will be discussing best practices when navigating the CSU Global Library. Um, just so you know, please note that this uh, session will be recorded. It is being recorded currently and all registered attendees will receive a recording after the event. We have an excellent program for you today, and I'm really excited to begin this discussion, this presentation. But before we get started, just a few things to consider. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see a chat button. Go ahead and introduce yourself or tell us what you're excited uh, to learn about today or just say hello. And remember to select everyone in the drop down field. Also, you will see a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. And at any time during the presentation, um, go ahead and submit any questions you might have, and we'll answer as many of those as possible, either during the presentation that apply to um, exactly what we're talking about or to continue the conversation on a subject, or we also have a, a Q&A section built into uh, this presentation at the end. And with that, I would like to introduce our speaker for today, Jeffrey Wall. He is the Director of Library and Academic Resource Services here at CSU Global, and he's been in that position for about four years now. Uh, before, previously worked at, uh, here at from previously before, before CSU Global, he was the Library Director for Front Range Community College here in Colorado for about 13 years. And before Front Range, he was a law librarian for several law firms here in Denver. Um, Jeff says that CSU Global combines the best of both of these worlds as it has the educational aspects of an academic library and the fast pace of a law firm. Jeff holds a Master of Library Science degree from Emporia State University and a Bachelor of Science in Music, which he earned from the University of Colorado at Denver. He uh, grew up here in Colorado near Akron, Colorado, and now currently lives in Broomfield. And with that, I would like to uh, introduce, and, and many of you probably know him and have worked with him. Uh, please uh, use the chat to join me in welcoming Jeff Wall. Hey, hey, everybody. Thanks a lot for showing up. This is really cool. Thank you to Paul for setting this up. I think this webinar series is just great. And I've been looking forward to this for a couple of weeks now. So this is terrific. If I haven't worked for you before, uh, or work with you before. Nice to meet you. And remember that you can schedule a one on one session with me very easily. There's a link on the library website. You can schedule a one on one session with me. So, and that's really my specialty is doing one on one appointments with people. Today will be great. Um, but you'll probably have, and we'll answer as many questions as we have. You'll probably have questions we can't get to, or some questions you think of later, or you'll want to work individually on a research project you have. That's great. Uh, just uh, send me an email or book a research session to the library website, and we'll get into that. So without any further ado, I think we'll just jump into this. Uh, I understand it's not easy doing library research. I understand, and there's all sorts of little complications. And really, I hope today I can show you some basic tricks that will make this a lot easier for you. It's, it's different than Google. It works different than out. I'll, I'll just tell you that up front. If, if you're trying to make it work just like Google, it doesn't really do that. But we'll just show you some little tips and tricks. And uh, hopefully this will make it a lot easier for you. And uh, I'll be stopping every few minutes after kind of have just a few sections here. After each little section, I'll stop. We'll take a few questions. Then at the end, we'll take a whole bunch of questions. OK, here we go. So. The first thing I'd like to cover is just some advanced searching techniques. You might hear people call this Boolean. I usually just say advanced searching techniques. Boolean is like a type of a, a algebra theory. So it's kind of like, it's a little bit like um, SQL programming language if you've ever seen that, but it's nothing scary like that. Just using some different little techniques. It's vaguely reminiscent of algebra, but yeah, I, I promise you, you're not going to have to do any math with this. So. First thing I do when I search, I bypass the search box and I go directly to the advanced search screen. 
So let's jump in here. We're going to do some live searching. This is cool here. This is nice and convenient, and it gets people into searching, and it kind of looks like Google, but <clears throat> I never use this. It's cool, but this will take you into the advanced search screen when you type a search in here. So I just go directly in. I always click right here. And this loads the whole database. I like the advanced search screen. I like to search more than one box at a time with these search boxes. I don't like just to use one box. So I'm going to jump right in here. Let's just say you're starting this off to project. I'm doing some research. I want leadership, style, and retention. Now, notice I'm using different boxes for this. These are three really different types of ideas, but I want to mix them all together but I'm keeping them separate. That's the big strength of a library database search engine like this, is you have separate things that you can control and add different attributes to. So my first thing, go to the advanced search screen, use the different boxes. Use these different boxes. Don't try to type it all in on one. We can use each box for some really interesting things here. So we'll just run a search here. I wanna do some research on the leadership style and how that affects retention. Okay. We are 355 results, which is great. I thought we would get a little bit more. I want to do some things to get more. I want a whole lot of results before I start narrowing things down. And 355 doesn't seem like very much to me. Let's jump back in here. First thing I'm going to talk about today is the use of the asterisk. And on your keyboard, this would be shift eight. Okay, so this is nice leadership, but I'm, I'm missing out on, on leader, leaders, those different versions of the word. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of ship. We're going to go to leader and I'm going to do shift eight, make it an asterisk. So we get every version of the word leader. Now we'll get leader, leaders, leadership. Let's see what happens now. Okay. Now we have 462. Just adding that little trick there increased our results by over 100 results. Okay, that's very powerful. Using that asterisk is very powerful. And after I mentioned this throughout our presentation today, I'll be using these things uh, very often. Okay, <clears throat> next, the magic of or. Okay, or is so powerful in these, okay? We got leader, leadership, but what about, and now see here, I'm gonna do it in the same box. So when you're talk, talking about something that's kind of the same or similar, I'm going to use the same box, leader or CEO, leader, any version of leader or CEO style and retention. Let's see what happens now. We have 462. Now we have 514. Almost increased it by another 100. Okay. What about for manager? Now, what could manager also be? That could be management too, right? So let's go here. This is where the spelling would change. And let's add an asterisk right there. And you can do as many ors as you want in a box. Okay, uh oh 1,112. Now remember, we started with 350 or something like that. Look how much we've increased it just by adding a few little tricks here. Okay, now we could kind of do the same thing with retention. You could do retention or turnover or attrition. You can do as many ors as you want, but these are kind of similar and they might not all be in there under retention. Maybe it's under turnover or attrition. Let's give this, give this a try. And I just keep hitting this search box. It's kind of like a, a slot machine lever. I just keep pulling it to see what we get. Again, we started with 355. Look how many, look how many different sources we have now. Okay. Now let's go back to our thing here. I have to stay on track. Not. Okay. Let's use not now. Now I'm out of search boxes, right? But I can add as many search boxes as I want right here. And I can take them away too. So these are, I'm saying and, I'm saying I want this and I want this and I want this. What if there's things I don't want in here? Just looking through here, okay. Nurse managers, leadership styles, okay. Uh, manager leadership, uh, nurse managers. What if I'm not interested in articles on nursing? And there will be a lot of things on nursing and medical because there are a lot of medical journals out there. So what I could do here, let's say I, I don't really want to look at all these articles on nursing. I'm gonna change this last box to not. And if you're gonna use this technique with not, always make sure it's your last box. It doesn't work correctly if you do not and then you do and. Make not your last box, okay? Now, 
I'm going to type in nurse. Now, what should I do here, people who are listening here? Could be nurse, could be nurses, could be nursing. Here's where the spelling would change. Let's go right there. Listen to add an asterisk. Now, I don't want to see anything to do with nurses or nursing. Okay, now that took it down. You notice there's less articles now. Now we're going the other way. And now I'm not seeing those. I'm not seeing those nursing things in there anymore. Okay. Let's go back here and see what we're going to talk about next. Okay, limiter drop downs. Now, this is why I like keeping these in separate boxes, because now I can use these little things over here to add different conditions to these different things. Now, the most basic thing we could do, and probably a lot of you are thinking, how come you haven't done this yet? Because I know a lot of you are pretty good about using these databases. I would go over here. We're going all the way back to 1947 with these resources. Maybe we'll say 2018 is as far back as we want to look. So here's the first limiter here, the, the date. And I'll click enter. Then we're just looking at things. Now we're down to 640. So now we're going to start narrowing it down. Okay. Now let's get, let's start setting some conditions. So leader, any version of leader or CEO or any version of manage. Let's say those have to be in the titles of the resources. So I'm going to take this selective field and I'm going to say that has to be in the title. Then I run a search. And now notice. I didn't, now we have 161, so it's really starting to get specific now. Notice I didn't change that. They don't, these things all don't have to be in the title. See, that's the, the beauty of having these in different boxes is I can set different conditions for all of these things, okay? Maybe, uh, so let's just take a look through here. We're looking really, really, really specific now. Looking good. Maybe retention or promover attrition. Maybe that needs to be in the subject of these articles. See, I can do different things with all of these if I have them in separate boxes. And it really gives me a lot of control over what I look at, okay? Now we're down to 30. So we started with 350 articles. We went all the way up over 3,000. And then I turned it around very quickly. And now we're down to 30 articles that are exactly what I'm looking for, okay? And here's one of my biggest secrets for research. As we're doing this, keep a very open mind. If you can, don't commit to the topic of exactly what you're going to write about until you've done some basic research. See, I look at this. This looks interesting to me. Study of managers' views of management and leadership of Generation Z employees. See, I wasn't thinking about that when I started this. But now that I see that, ah, I could really incorporate that in, into my paper or write an entire paper on generational differences between supervisors and employees. Now, it's because I'm keeping a really open mind about this. Okay, so that's one of my biggest secrets. Let, and I'll, I'll say this a bunch of times today. Let the research guide you. Okay, let it kind of guide you and tell you a little story here. Okay, let's talk about quotation marks. This is a big secret too. Now, at any point when we're doing these searches and I want to do a new search, I could just click here, new search. Because I've set a lot of conditions here. Let's say I just want to start over. It's a good idea if I want to do that to click here, new search, because if I don't and I start running other searches, it will keep a lot of those other conditions. So let's start over here. Just going to do a basic search here. I'm going to do computer network. And because I love these asterisks, I'm just going to throw that on there immediately. So got computer networks and looking through here, got a lot of stuff. Looks good, looks good. Okay, computer systems and networking, uh, uh, networks, wireless sensor. So I want to get more specific with this. I'm seeing, so it's right now what it's doing. It's searching computer and network, okay? I want it to search this phrase exactly, computer network. I don't want it to search one word and then the next word. I want this phrase. So I'm going to put some quotation marks around it. This is kind of like in algebra when you have the parentheses. This is why it kind of is like algebra. Now, this is like one, one entity, like an algebra equation when you have two plus four in parentheses, that's set aside from the rest of the, the equation. That's kind of like, now this is, even though it's two words, this database is going to see it as one entity. So it's going to see it more like it's one word. It doesn't, it's not. Now we're seeing, and let's say computer network is in the title. We're going to use that limiter. And this, this is fun. Once you start using these little tricks, it becomes fun, okay? Computer network, computer net, and I'm seeing everything now 
computer networks, exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, how about let's throw an OR in here? OR, wireless network. So you can use these things all in conjunction with each other too. I can have phrases in quotation marks and then an OR between them because it's, it sees it as one entity, these things. So this or this. Okay, now boy, that increased it a lot. And we could go down here looking at this. Okay, so we've got 5G there. Okay, this is from, I see this is from a conference. This is a bunch of articles from a conference as well as this one. Let's say I don't want to look at things from conferences. Okay, I could, you know what I'm going to do? Let's change this to not, not conference. I don't want to look at conference proceedings. We're going to take that out. Okay, that took out that we had 14,000, that was 13,000. There were like 10,000 things associated with conferences. And that took a lot. These, that not is sometimes your best friend to tell it what you don't want to see. Okay. What about I don't want to see 5G in there? Not conference. You can also use the ORs with not. Not conference or 5G. I don't want to see either of those things in these articles. And then that's gone. And that took a lot out too. Now we're that, that took out maybe 500 or more articles. This not and the ORs are very, very, very powerful. Okay, let's go back so I can stay on task here because this starts becoming fun. And I just go off the rails and start having fun with this because I, I think it is fun. Okay, talk about limiters. Ah, the biggie, peer reviewed limiter. Okay, you know about this when, you're, when your course says you only want, let's do the date limiter here. Uh, your course says they just want to see peer reviewed academic literature, scholarly sources. You could click this little limiter here and it would go through and take out anything that wasn't from a peer review journal. Okay, so that's a that's a pretty basic one. Okay, let's go the other way. I want to do a new search now. I, after we've been going a little while, I want to kind of kind of clean it out, try something a little bit different. We'll just do something basic here, leader, and then we'll go. How about psychology? But I use these asterisks all the time. I'm going to go with an asterisk there, so I get psychology or psychological. Let's run a search. And here we go, Ooh, leadership psychology, how the best leaders inspire their people. Again, I'm keeping an open mind. And as I'm going here, that looks like a good one. I'm probably going to use. Okay, that's a book. This is a book, that's great. I had, let's limit these here. This is almost like a reflex with me on the years. Okay, so we've got this and this is cool. We're getting some good books here. Let's go peer reviewed. We did that before. And these are those really technical academic journals, which is great. But let's say we want to go the other way. Let's say we have enough peer reviewed journals in our sources. Let's get something more accessible. How about magazines? So you can go the other way and limit it to more basic resources too. So oh, right over here, limit by source type. Magazines. Just show me the magazine articles. Let's get nice, basic, easy reading level and cool. Let's talk, look at this, your two new leadership cures, leadership spotlight. See, these are more basic. In an uncertain world, acceptance gives leaders an edge, the antidote to resentment. That sounds great. And they're not as technical. Now, ooh, look at that. Great leaders are thoughtful and deliberate, not impulsive and reactive. Great. So I can use these as well as the peer review. You don't just have to use the peer review. I've got my four required peer reviewed articles. Okay, cool. I've hit that requirement. Now I'm gonna go back and look for some other things I can supplement this with, okay? And I promise you in just a second, I'm gonna stop and take some questions. I know we probably got some questions bubbling up here. Okay, now I'm gonna, before I move on to eBooks, let's look at that Harvard. I really like Harvard Business Review. Remember that, I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. Okay, let's take off here. Let's see what, what kind of limitations we have here. We can limit to all sorts of different kinds of sources. Okay, we've taken this off. We're back to the general thing. We don't make sure that peer review is off so we can look at everything. Let's show more. Okay, and how about we go about books? Now I'm just going to look at books, things from books we have access to on this subject. 
Now, let me take this off. Go back to my thing here to keep me on task. Let's we'll limit to a specific publication or type of publication. So up here, remember these drop downs? I really liked, I want to see what else Harvard might have on this, Harvard Business Review. So I'll type in Harvard here. And then over here, select a field. I'll change this to source, journal, title, or source. So now I'm going to look at things, publications that have Harvard in the title, publishing articles from that type of thing. Here's 180. Okay, there's that one from Harvard Business Review. And here's Harvard National Security Journal. So maybe I need to more be more specific here. I'm going to use my quotation marks. And I'm just going to say Harvard Business. I don't need to go all the way to review because I doubt there's any other publications like that. Now, when this comes back, all of these will be from Harvard Business Review. And they, I really like those articles from there. Structure that's not stifling. More cool ideas. And I can, again, I'm keeping an open mind. I'm going to incorporate all this into my paper because I'm just looking for anything I can use. When your feelings conflict with your leadership role, you could write a whole paper on that. How busy people can develop leadership skills. And they're really, this is a great publication. They're also pretty easy to read. Okay, what do we got next here? Okay. Let me stop for a second. And if you don't have any questions, that's fine. That's okay. And we'll take a few questions out if you have any. If you don't, that's fine too. And at the end, we'll take a whole bunch of questions. So yeah. if I don't know the answer to a question, which happens a lot, I'm going to admit that. We, we'll talk about it later and you can email me or I can work up something and help you later. I, I, I know some answers to some things, but I don't know ever answered everything. Okay. So oh, this is great. Happens, Paul? Yeah, we got questions. This is great. You've really covered a lot of material and territory already. I've learned so much. And I, I like that that idea that you have of let the, the research help guide your thoughts, help guide your own, you know, interests. It really does spark a lot of different ideas once you just see what's available before going in. Yes. Um, so I do have a question from Cynthia. Okay. She's asking, can you have multiple not sections or is it better to just use the or? I That's an excellent question. I always just use one. I use one not. And then I have had in these searches before, I have had up to, I've had probably 70 knots in here. Not oh or, 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 or you can have as many not ors, or you can use or with the and box and you can have as many as you want. I keep it all in one box. You know, it might work with another box that I've never done that. I just always keep it in one. And I sometimes I have a, a, a search, a really specific search where there's thousands of things and I don't want to miss out on anything that I don't want to miss out on anything that I don't want to miss out on. So I start seeing things I don't want to see and I just keep going back and put not, not or, not or, 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 or. I'll, I use this a lot of times for if I'm seeing, if I'm seeing a bunch, of, I'm sure you've seen this before. You see a lot of articles or studies published in a lot of different countries, and you're primarily interested in the U.S. instead of that. And you keep seeing China come up or Ethiopia or something that you're not interested. You can take those countries out, not China, not or Ethiopia or or whatever or Malaysia. That's a good. So great question, excellent question. I always just use it this way. You might want to experiment to see if you can do more than one, but I always just use one. Now, I, I, get, I start having fun here and I have to rein myself in. This is great. So I'm going to stop talking and we'll go on to the next question. That's what they call that rabbit hole that you go into. I Once live. you get in here, it's just. Yes. Yeah, I know that feeling when we do interlibrary loan for students and you see an article that somebody requested and you think, oh, wow, I didn't know I was interested in that, but now I'm totally interested in what this topic is or the title of this of this study so let me get to the next question and it's about access and okay. do students have access to monthly publication subscriptions like hbr harvard business review through the library well what you can do let me show you a trick to how you can do that uh if if you if you don't you won't have like a subscription here let me show you how how so sort of I would go up here to library databases A to Z. This is searching all the databases, but something else we're gonna talk about in a minute here is how to do individual databases. Now, I know where that database is. We could also search for it at, at Osher, we can talk about that too. 
I know that that, that publication lives here, in business source complete. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to publications here, and I'm going to browse for Harvard. And well, Harvard Business Review, it's, I've looked for this before. Okay, so I can go here and open this up, and I can just browse through all of the issues. I'll open this up, I can go to any issue I want. So uh, it's kind of, so yes and no, it'll be a little different than what you might be used to, but you can just go in here and it's kind of nice because you have all the back issues without having to storing, store them in your house. And I can just open up that issue and just look through this. Or if I just wanted to search that, I could also search within this publication and it'll format a search where I could just search through all of the current and back issues of that. So it basically, the, de the, the individual journals all live in these databases. So if you know how to find them, you can get them. And if you don't know where a database is, you could go here to publications in the big search. I'm going to open this in a new tab and I'm going to type in Harvard Business Review. <clears throat> And then it would it would look and find it for me. And there it took as a business source complete, that place that I just went to. So if you're curious about if we have a certain journal and you want to go into it and read through everything, you might want to go into that publications thing there and just search it and it will it will link it up for you. Great, great questions. Hopefully I answered that in a cool. satisfactory way. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Um, I have another question, and it, we just kind of alluded to it earlier about interlibrary loan. What happens when you click on the links to access the article, paper, or book, and it says the link cannot be found or that you don't have access to view that source? Well, sometimes that does happen. What what you might want to do, if it, it shouldn't do that. I mean, shouldn't though, right? It's this as long as you keep this full text on, this should link you up to things that you have immediate access to. But sometimes you will hit a dead end in here where where it, it doesn't. What I would do really one of the things you might want to do, send me an email and say I, I tried to find this, the database said we had access to it and and we don't because I would like to look into it and see what the problem is because that's a problem. And I can go into the back end of this and fix some things. And it really helps me a lot if I know, because I don't want you to run into that issue. If you run into that, let me know where it was and I can see if I can fix it. Or a lot of times, this is called the discovery system. You see where it says discovery service. What it's doing is searching, it's searching all of our databases at once. And sometimes it messes up and there's a bad connection in there or it thinks it has access to a journal in one of these databases that it doesn't actually have access to. And it happens, let me know, I can go in the back end and fix that. Now, another thing we're gonna talk about later, if there's something that you, you really want and it led you to it and you weren't getting it here, you could always go into interlibrary loan here. We're gonna talk about this a little bit later, but we'll talk about it right now. This will automatically log you into a system where you can order in a free copy of this. Here is an article I ordered in from Harvard Business Review that was a really old one, a really article, really old article from 1977 that we didn't have access to. And I ordered this in for myself. And they sent it to me. There's no, there's no cost for it. You could create a request here. But definitely let me know if there's something you don't, that it's hit, you're hitting a dead end on. So I can A, see if I can fix it in, in a, and I'll see if I can find some other way to get access to it. And then I'll send it to you. So it was a very long answer, but that's that's my answer. <laughs> Maybe we'll just do one more question and then let okay. you move on to your uh, next question. topic. And this and the, yeah, these there's a lot of great questions coming cool. in. Um, somebody's asking, um, and it kind of relates to this as well. That and I think it's important because I think a lot of us run into this um, on occasion. Is when you're doing a search and you're looking up for a specific topic. It either requires that I have to pay for it or gain add to gain access, or it asks for you know certain login credentials, net ID, login, which we don't have or not familiar with. How do I navigate through uh, that situation? Well, again, it shouldn't that shouldn't ever happen with this system here. This is set up to bypass that so that 
you only are searching things that the school has paid access to already. So first, don't ever pay for access to anything like that. Let me know what the problem is. If you're hitting that and it's asking you for something like that, then there's a problem. And I need to figure out what the problem is. And there are little problems and errors. It's a computer program that has glitches like anything else. You should never have to do that. Let me know when you run into something like that and I can help you find a copy and worst comes to worst, we'll order it through interlibrary loan for you. Um, but don't, don't pay for anything like that. So if you're running into that problem and it happens, it happens to me sometimes, uh, then there's, there's some kind of an error and let me know and I'll see if I can get it fixed. And one way or another, I'll help you get access. And here's my thing. If I can't get you access to it, what I will do is run searches on my end and I will find a bunch of similar items and I will send you suggestions for things that should cover the same ground. Uh, and that's usually pretty easy for me to do. So worst case scenario, I will run some searches and find some things that probably are talking about the same thing, even though it, it will not be the exact same article you were looking for. Cool. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, we okay. have we have other questions, but I can definitely ask them um, as they come in and okay. uh, on your next section. And when and when we get to uh, yeah, we'll we'll take little question breaks like this, and then at the end, I'll stay as long as we have time for to ask as many questions, and feel free to email me questions too. Cool. Okay, let's see what we're covering next here. Okay, the search all databases box isn't always the best place to start. Okay, so this system we've been searching, this is great, this is great, and it's the biggest thing it searches everything, but. Like some of the problems we were talking about that happens and the search all databases box, sometimes it can't see things that you could find really useful. This is great at finding articles and books and videos and very standard things. It's not terrific at finding the more esoteric specific things that you might really want to use. So in a lot of cases, when you're really looking for something specific, a lot of times the best thing is to go into an individual database and search for something. There are a lot of cool things in these individual databases that sometimes this can't see, or it's buried in the thousands and thousands of results that are coming back here. So let's see here. Get my notes. Okay. Let's talk about ebooks. I love ebooks. In a lot of cases, articles are not the best place to start. And be honest with you, in many, many, many cases, maybe the majority of projects, ebooks are best to start. Ebooks as a, an article is very, very specific, covering one very specific topic for five to 20 pages. It's only going to cover that thing. Okay. In a lot of cases with research, you're wanting to start off with an overview. Give me a general idea of what's going on with this subject. That's in a lot of cases, I will start with an ebook. So even though this system does search eBooks, we saw them coming up. If I really want to start my research on eBooks, I'll go directly to eBooks and cut out all that other stuff. These are, if you click your eBook databases, these are our different databases that only search eBooks, okay? I have this one listed first because it's the biggest and it's my favorite. Let's open this one up, EBSCO eBooks. Okay, now we were doing a leadership topic. I'll do this again, something like that. It's going to bring back a lot less resource. It's still a lot, 5,108, but these are all books and you have full access to all of these books. Okay, and there's some cool stuff in here. The connecting leader, serving concurrently as a leader and a follower. That sounds cool. And when we open this up, it's not an article. This is a full book. Okay, this gives you a nice summary of what the book is. And then how I do this, I go over here to the table of contents. And I like to scroll through the table of contents to see what's there. Here's the contents. And then I look for something that looks interesting to you. I'm probably not going to read this whole book for my paper, but I'm going to find something in here. Leader and follower as one. That sounds fascinating to me. Leader and follower as one. Again, bingo. Now I've got a direction for my paper. Okay, that could be a whole paper right there. Leadership and followership as one, connecting leaders in the military. Everyday leadership and engaged followership, two sides of the same construct. Okay, that really interests me. I'm going to open it up to that section here. 
takes a little bit to open it up. You still got all your contents over here. And then we got this little arrow. And then I've got the section on this, okay? And then I can scroll through anything else I want to look at in this book. Okay, back here, let's look at some other ones in here. Go back to my result list. Leadership, the current state of play, leadership by design. Let's get creative here. I don't, I don't know, but let's do like, you know, those different styles, authentic or servant leadership or uh, transformational. I'll just go that far and do an asterisk. You can get a little lazy with those asterisks too. Hey, I do it all the time. Uh, or charismatic. Oh, let's get just some really specific things. Hey, oh, transformational and charismatic leadership. The road ahead. Great. See? And again, these are full books. These are full books I'm going to look at that are going to be a lot different from articles. Yours truly, staying authentic and leadership in life. That sounds great. Let's open this up. Again, it's a book. It's not an article. I'm probably not going to read the whole thing. I am going to go to the table of contents. The heart factor. Be yourself with passion and humility. Well, that sounds like something we could all do here. Confident humility, power of unsung heroes, great. That sounds great. Why humble people make better leaders. Bingo, new paper topic right there. Again, I'm just browsing, I'm gathering, I'm keeping an open mind because I don't want this paper to be horrible. I don't want this to be drudgery. I wanna have fun with this. I wanna be creative. And that, that is, is interesting to me. I can look at this, why humble people make better leaders. See. You don't hear that very often. People always think of the leader as the person who's really brash and confident and loud. Wait, what about people who are really humble? You can probably think in your mind that some of the best bosses you have were probably pretty humble. Okay, great. I love it. I love eBooks. I start my research with eBooks so often. And if you contact me for a one-on-one, -on -one, I'm probably going to, and in many cases, I'll say, let's start with eBooks. So, and if you ever, any of you out there are watching and worked with me, I generally, I generally take us that direction first. So again, that's searched in this system. But if I'm just looking for eBooks, I'm gonna go directly to an eBook database. Okay, what are we gonna talk about next? Opposing Viewpoints, one of my favorite databases. And it is, it's, its contents are different enough to where it's hard to find them in here. And it's set up as its own kind of database system, okay? I'm going to go in here now. Cover what I go. You, you've seen me going here to the A to, B, A, to A to Z database list. You could also do databases by subject and browse for a database that you're looking for. I know where all the databases are, so I go there to A to Z. But if you didn't know exactly where it was, this is kind of arranged alphabetically going this way, looking down, going A to Z that way, and then it goes over here. So this is going to be under pro con controversial issues databases. So this spe specified, this specializes in controversial issues, which are always sometimes the most interesting papers because there's something you can really argue. If you get an argumentative paper assignment, this would be a great place. Here's what I do with this. And what I really like about this database is I can browse the issues. I don't know what I want to write in my paper. I have no clue. I'm going to browse through these issues and I'm going to look to find something. Okay. And look at all these issues. I don't know what I want to write about. Look at this. You could shop for a topic for your paper. Isn't that great? And this, this database does not shy away from the highly charged issues. It leans in to the really controversial issues, which is great. Okay. I'll choose kind of a general one here. How about electric? You can see I've clicked on it before. Electric and hybrid, electric vehicles and cars. Okay. Starts off with a nice summary of the issue. If you click on here, you can read more about it. Then we get into these featured viewpoint articles. These are articles that are going to take a very strong stand one way or another for this issue or against it. There's featured viewpoints, very popular. We go down here, there's 18 different viewpoints. These are, eight, these are basically professionally published argumentative essays uh, that are going to try to convince you one way or another of something about this issue. If you click here, you can view all 18, 18 viewpoints. Be great for an argumentative essay. Look, 
It also has the peer reviewed journal articles, academic journal articles right here. Has reference, these are sections from reference books, more general about this, get, get your general facts. Infographics, got some images there. We've got videos, there's radio stories, audio magazines. Here's some of those more basic things, newspaper articles. So this database is kind of a one-stop shop, but the way it's set up, it's harder to find this stuff in the big system. So I would go directly in here, and this is something I really like too at the bottom, it links you to other related issues. Okay, we're talking about electric cars. Well, maybe we want to look at renewable energy in general. This links me to a whole other topic, very related. I could write, I could get all the sources I would need for my paper very quickly, going to this one database and just looking through. And this database is set up to be very browsing friendly. Instead of, you can type in things and search for it too, but it's really set up for you to just kind of look through and find what you're looking for. Now, I know I'm taking too long discussing this stuff, but I know we have a limited amount of time. So let's uh, see what we got next. Okay, so I'm going to start talking a little faster and going a little faster here because we have a lot of stuff to cover, but let's go here. Business profile paper. Let's say you're looking for a profile of a business. Again, you can search that in this bigger system, but it's harder for it to find. So I would go into back to our friend business source complete and business source complete has this section again this is not really a book and it's not really an article i'm looking for a business profile go right here company profile so i went into this i'm not going to use the search here i'm going to bypass it because i know there's this cool thing company profiles i'm going to search for apple if i can spell it correctly here we go apple incorporated Market line report. Let's open this up. Okay. And here's the market line report. This is a professional report on Apple. And it's a 143 page report. It's huge and it's going to be great. It's pretty current, too. Let's see. This is from December of 2022. Pretty current. Okay. Now we have a clickable table of contents here. Okay. We've got all this great stuff. We've got the key employees. Here's what's going on with their key employees. Let me go back and forth to their table of contents here so I can navigate this quickly. There's the business description. And again, it's so big. You know what I love about this is the SWOT analysis. Okay, we've got major products and service, all this. This is what I love, the SWOT analysis. Here's their strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Very different from just looking up an article. This is a report on this company. This is going to make writing my business profile paper so much easier on this company to be looking at 143 page professionally written profile of this company. So it gives us the general strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats here. Then it really fleshes it out here. What do we mean by these different strengths we have listed? Writes all about that. Okay. Now, this is something I really like too. Who are their competitors? Who are their top competitors? Like here, here's our top competitors. And if it's listed here, there will be another report in this system on one of these. So we could we could go in and run a search on ACE or then and then compare these companies side by side. So, and a little piece of advice: if you get one of these assignments to write a business profile paper, I would go to this database and I would look through. I would look through here and look through, find one in here. I wouldn't just choose. A small company that's down the street from me. I I would look. I would look for something in here because it's going to be a lot easier if I find a large company. You could also. This is so fun. I have to hold myself back because I'm having fun here. What about if we type in energy and I'm looking for energy companies? I'm not sure. I put on match any words. And these are the profiles they have on all the energy companies, and it's only going to profile really really large companies. So you're not going to find your local coffee shop in here, you know? But this, and look at all those, you could compare those companies to each other. Okay, let's keep going here. U.S. history and context. Oh, this is fun. I love this database. Let's say you're in a history class. Again, it's hard to find some of these specific things like, like these history profiles in here. I'm gonna go here, databases by subject. Let's look for history. Here we go. I love this, U.S. history and context. I know we have some U.S. history courses here. Okay, it's the same company that does opposing viewpoints. So it's very set up for browsing. I'm gonna browse the topics. I have to write a paper, some kind of US history paper. 
look at all these topics I could look into write about. Okay. And if I'm going to write about the French and Indian War, I'm going to click on this. Just like the other one, it gives you a nice summary of the topic. Then you get into the featured content about these academic journal articles. There's your peer reviewed stuff. Reference, here's just some basic stuff. What was the French? Then 258 and 258 different reference books on here. Primary sources, the original documents from that time. Look at all that because they asked for that in those history papers. Primary sources, references, uh, academic peer reviewed. Okay, look at this biographies. 150 biographies of key people from that time. This, I could probably write my whole paper on the French and Indian War from this thing that guides me right to this, okay? U.S. history and contents, uh, in context, I love it, it's amazing. Okay, I'm gonna skip over checkpoint right now because it's a little more complicated database and we're, I know I'm pushing the time limits here, but it's a great tax database, accounting database. Let me show you another one here real quick. Let's see, you're looking for legal research, okay? that it's hard to find cases in this here. And that's not what it specializes in. Let's jump in here. Uh, we're looking for legal. Here we go. Now, Nexus Uni, it's, it's not that user-friendly of a database. I'm just gonna warn you. But I'm gonna show you how to use it here. It's great for cases. I don't use it for that much else. When we open this up, right here, I'm gonna tell it cases. I'm gonna let it leave it set to federal cases. And I'll say non-compete agreement. I'm going to look for case federal cases on non-compete agreements. We'll say last five years. And we're searching. Now it's searching only the court cases. Okay, you're not having to wade through all those articles and books. And these databases are not great at finding those anyway. This database is the best thing that it does. Okay. And there's a lot of different things you can do here. Uh, I need to speed this up because I'm at, unfortunately, I'm having fun. And then I start just going off on these topics. Let's take a quick break for questions. It's easy to do, isn't it? Oh, it's so fun. Once you get into it, it's fun. If yeah. You decide, it's fun. Okay. You I just have too much for you. You just have all this knowledge at, you know, your fingertips that you have access to, and it just goes everywhere. For, and I think that's why we get into libraries and, and, and writing and helping students research because everything is interesting and everything that the students bring to you to, to research uh, yeah. definitely is interesting. Um, and we do have questions. One of them uh, coming from a student is asking, and this is more of a, along the lines of the, doing the actual, once you get the research, is there an easier way to like skim through all the material without reading every, you know, you mentioned looking at the table of contents, going to that specific chapter or, or what other best practices or tips and tricks do you have and not having to, you know, read a 35 page um, scholarly article to get the gist of it, um, where they feel like they're spending most of their time when they're doing research. Well, I'll, sh I'll show you my biggest, well, and hopefully this hits the marks of what you're saying. We'll take this off, we'll do a little more general here. Um, wh what I, and there's, let's see, sometimes, sometimes when you browse for publications, it will reset your whole database to just look for publications, be aware of that. Uh, let me turn here, leader, I'm gonna do this, and cycle log, there we go, okay. And I'm gonna set this to peer reviewed. I'm gonna show you one of the biggest secrets I have for this. Let's set it to peer reviewed. Instead of going back and forth to see like the summaries of these articles, the biggest thing I can tell you right here, this nice little magnifying glass, if I hover over this or if I click on this, it will bring me up a summary. There's an abstract I can tell very quickly if this article interests me. If it looks interesting to me, I'm gonna throw it in a folder to look at it later. If I'm looking through something else looks sort of interesting. I'm gonna hover here, it gives me a quick abstract. Does that look interesting? Yeah, not really, okay? And I, so I'm not gonna click back and forth into every one of these. I'm gonna click on this little thing here to see the abstract, see if it interests me. I'm not gonna try to read the whole thing. Okay, that looks interesting, cool, cool. What about this one? And I just keep going through these. I'm not worrying about reading the whole thing. Anything that looks like it's potentially interesting to me, I'm gonna throw in that folder to look at. It. Then later, after I, so I'm gonna spend maybe, I don't know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes doing that. Well, I could do it in five minutes. But then 
when I'm ready to narrow it down, I'm going to go up here to the folder of all the things that looked interesting to me. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to go more in depth. And I'm not looking at a thousand articles now. I'm looking at the four articles that looked interesting to me. Now I'm going to go in and look closer at these. Now, there's something we're going to talk about a little bit later, but here the folder's great. The folder's great. But when I close this session, this folder is going to disappear unless you do this, unless you sign in. If you sign in or if you and if you haven't done this before, you can create when you click sign in, you can create your own free folder. And you can you can organize all of your research. These this database is great. This system because it no it not only searches for things it organizes things. Let me go to another one. I'm logged in on this other. One. Now when I go in my folder, okay, you know what? Log let me log in on this one. It logs me off. I'm sure you've all experienced that before. Unfortunately, when it logs you off, this would be a good a good reason to do that. It saved my login here. I'm going to sign in, and now. I have permanent folders in here. Again, they're free. Okay, now I have these articles in here, but look at this over here. Look at all these folders. I have all these subfolders within my big folder. And anytime I want to go back to these articles that I have, I can I can go back to them. Let's say I was looking at uh, HUM 101, Humanities 101. They were having me do some research last week. I don't want to lose all this research I gathered. I want to go back to my sources on Cicero. I have 12 books saved in there on Cicero. Okay, and I can go back to them anytime that I want. Let me go back to my general folder here. And I have these articles I just gathered up here. Let me go back to my folder here on uh, uh, psychological leader stuff. I could create a new folder right now. And leadership psychology, and I'll create a folder in here. And then <clears throat> I'll take these articles I have in my general folder, and I'll put these into the new folder I created, leadership psychology. Then when I want to go back to this and see, the nice thing is if I log off right now or the system logs me off, I can always log back in and I, I will not have lost these articles. That's the only problem with using this system is the folder, uh, unless you create one of these systems, it, it'll go away. Now, let me show you something else. Oh, we're covering a ton of stuff here. How-to videos on the library website, how-to videos. I remember he showed me something in that presentation about folders, okay? Here's folders. This is a video show, which shows you what I just showed you. They'll show you how to create your own folder how to log in and how to store and navigate these folders. Okay, everything, oh, not everything. A lot of things we're talking about today are in the folder. We didn't get to checkpoint today. If you want to know more about checkpoint, there's a video in here, some videos in here that'll help you use checkpoint. Okay, the folders are a huge, huge thing. Another thing we're talking about are peer reviewed scholarly articles. These articles are so hard to read. Okay, here's a long video on what is a peer reviewed scholarly article so you can understand what it is. This is a really long video. Here's a short one, just give me the basics. How do I make sense of one of these articles? This is a, is a video I made that'll just show you how to get through one of these articles very quickly, how to skim read it, how to find the sections, what order you should read it in to make the most sense out of it quickly. Woo, that was a long answer. I hope I hope I answered that, that question adequately. You answered but, like three or four questions that were coming through. I that know. was perfect. Okay. All right, this question, a little more subject specific. Um, if you need to find information on investigating bloody crime scenes, like for law classes, what would you type in? I could never find anything relevant. Well, I, I would I would probably keep it keep it really general, and um, I would probably go to the ebooks and I would look for something on crime scene investigation or police reporting. Uh, that would be a good place to start, and. Um, then I, I would probably think of when you're typing into these databases, think how general you can keep your keep your source. I would probably type in crime scene investigation, and you might put in blood, or you might put in crime in one box and forensic in the next box and the next blood, or you might type in the first box serial, or you might type murder, and the next box you might type in evidence or investigation, and also. 
set up an appointment with, the first thing is when you're running into those types of dead ends, set up an appointment with me. We will go through and we will figure it out. We will figure out how to do this. And in a lot, in some cases, in many cases, what you're looking for is not in an academic database. There might be a great, just general online resource we could find and I can help you find those. Because not, I mean, this is, this is, these are academic databases. They do very specific things. They don't do everything. Sometimes you find yourself in a situation where you're looking for something they just don't have. And then I'll, we'll, we'll go off road. I'll, I'll work with you and we will find a source for you. And in some cases, we don't have the right ebook. We can add ebooks to our collection. If we find this is something that people really need here, I, I can go shopping and find a book that I think would cover this and then add it to the collection. And then I would send you a link to the book as soon as it's live. I worked with a student um, last week who was doing a paper on basically how to add a new medical practice to a hospital. And we really didn't have anything on it. So I went out and I bought a couple of books on it and um, added this to the library website. And then I sent the student a couple of links to these books. So totally, I'm totally open to that. If there's something you keep hitting dead ends on, set up an appointment with me, let me know. If we're having a dead end for something you, that students are going to need for a course, we, we should have it. And then we'll we'll buy some other things to cover it. And this could be could be a case of that. So that might be that might be cool. And you would probably know more about the topic than I do if you've been researching. So we would work together on that. Hopefully that's an acceptable answer. Cool. Thanks, Jeff. Um, cool. another question for you. What is the best way to find primary sources? And I think you did cover some of that in the, um, like yeah. the US in context, some of those individual databases and what, you know, like what is a primary source? What would you, how would you define that? Well, it depends on what we're talking about with a primary source. Generally the simplest, the simplest way to think of a primary source is uh, a, an eyewitness to an event or the person who created or gathered the data, uh, him or herself, like for example, if we're talking about the Civil War or the American Revolution, the primary source would be somebody who was there, okay? And that U.S. history uh, database and context would lead you to primary sources, journals from soldiers who fought in those wars, journals from George Washington, letters back and forth to people who were fighting in that war. That's a primary source. That's someone who was there. Now, if we're talking about more like research articles, a primary source, a lot of those peer-reviewed articles, what they are is someone ran an experiment or gathered and analyzed data, and then this person wrote up an article on that. So the person who did the experiment, the person who was with the beakers in the lab wrote the article, that person was a witness to it. That person was there at the source. That's a primary source too. And if you're looking for historical events, primary sources, a lot of that stuff is free online too. Again, not everything is gonna, not everything. We don't have everything in our databases. You could also go to go to Google. Hey, I'm not opposed to Google. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Go to Google, type in uh, some topic you're, you're thinking of, uh, Kennedy assassination, primary source. And it will, Google will take you there too. I, I'm not, I'm not a Google snob. I, I like to use library databases when I can. Uh, and, and I think there's great stuff in there, great stuff you'd have to pay for online, but there's great stuff through Google too. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff. We've got through almost all the questions. It's almost one o'clock. Let me ask okay. you one more real quick, kind of a technical question. Yep. Um, someone has checked out some eBooks so they can read them offline. Yep. However, after I download the ebook, I'm not able to access the ebook offline. I have also installed the program that was in the prompt to read yep. the ebook offline. Am I missing a step? If you're running into that issue, uh, what it means is if the publisher has put some kind of a, a limit on how long you can keep this course of, because they don't want you to just own this book forever. And I've, I've seen that before. What I would do, um, is I would, and this works with the, with our biggest ebook database too. See if I still have it open here. You can also log in here and create a folder system. It's the same folder system in here. And I would, you notice earlier when I brought up that book on Cicero, uh, it, uh, I had it saved in there. If you save it in these folders, you won't have a problem getting back to it. 
Okay, so sometimes when you try to download the full context of a book, contents of a book, you'll run at that issue. If I if I go through here, I won't I won't run it. That, that's my solution to that. Is I would go here. I have my books here on Descartes. I've got fifteen of them here. It will never block me into it and getting full access to it here. Okay, that's my solution to that. Is create a free account in one and get a folder in here and add it to a folder, and then it will never it'll never block you from getting it to it. That's great. I didn't know that because I know they sometimes pull content that you thought you had access to at one time, but yep. it's kind of like saving it offline. You actually just still have access to it in perpetuity yep. forever. Cool. Yep. Yeah, I think we've answered most of the questions and I think you've covered a lot of content. And that, there's so much um, I didn't get to. Do you want me to do you want me to just run through really quickly some other high points? I'm available and free if you if you want to go for it. I'm I'm down for that. People, I'm staying here. I'm staying here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to go through really quickly a few other things that we didn't get access to. And I'll skip over a lot of things too, because I know we've gone an hour already. I really appreciate everyone who has stuck in here. I'm going to show you a few more things and then we'll take some more questions and stay as long as you want to stay. Okay. Folders in the databases. We just did that, right? We just talked about that. It's free. It exists in all EBSCO databases. It'll follow you to your next institution too if you transfer. Everybody's got EBSCO those folders would still be there. There's a library how-to video. We already talked about that. The full text finder link drives me crazy. I know what you're talking about. Drives me crazy too. Full text finder, uh, let's go back if we have a search here. What this database is doing, what this system is doing, it's searching all different kinds of databases from all different kinds of vendors. Okay, this is an EBSCO product. It's probably the biggest database company there is. If it's an EBSCO product, it will have the it'll have the article right there as a PDF. If it's going into another database like ScienceDirect, it'll give you this full text finder, which is basically saying, we're going outside of the databases we own and we're going into a different vendor's database. You click that link, then this will take you on a little obstacle course. You click that, then it'll take you into ScienceDirect and there's the article, okay? Now, in most cases, this is gonna work just fine. I do know I'm well aware that sometimes you will go in here and it'll miss. It's it's it sometimes misses. And if it misses, when you go into a full text finder, send me an email, let me know there's a problem. Also within this right up here, there's a link that says ask a librarian. If you click here, it will load this. This will have an email that will go directly to me. So either email me directly or you can email me from within the database too. Okay. And that's what the full text finder does. It's trying to, to get into a different vendor's database to find something. And it's generally pretty good. You will find times when it will miss. You will find times when you hit a dead end it, if you're doing a lot of this kind of research. Okay, so it's, it's going another step here. It's going a, going a couple steps to try to get here. Okay, I found that one just fine. But there will be times when it misses. That's how it should work. If it doesn't, let me know, okay? Okay. Okay. Now, another thing, there's nice research guides for a lot of courses or a lot of subjects. Let's go back here. Go oh, the research guides right here. These are guides we've put together uh, with a lot of different topics. Like last week, I worked with students having a hard time with this is that course I was telling you about without that we didn't have the good books for HCM 542. It's a course that has really high research requirements. So I put together a summary of what I think are some of the best resources for this course. There's books, articles, general internet sources. There's module one, going to module two. Here's some things that are gonna work well for module two. The really hard one for this one was module eight, the portfolio project. And so here are some great books, the business basics of building and managing a healthcare practice. That's the new one of the new books I bought and project management skills for healthcare. We needed these, we didn't have, have them, I added them. Now students who take this course, if they know about this LibGuide, they will have such a head start on getting in and finding a lot. This might be all the sources you need for this course. So look through your research guides. There's an English 130. They analyze the book, Things Fall Apart. I put together a whole guide here with all sorts of topics you might want to write your paper on for Things Fall Apart. It's different topics. Gender, Alconco, that's the major character. Religion, comparisons to Nietzsche, culture, tragedy. Okay, we'll go up here to the top. 
there's ebooks. There's, we have whole books just analyzing this book. Such a head start you're going to get if you know about this. Here's information just on this author of this book. This is set in this tribe of the Igbo tribe. There's all these, it's probably everything you would need to write your to write your paper, do your portfolio project is in this guide. There's all sorts of great guides in here. Here's one for history 201. And so we're adding these, we're adding these guides all the time. You might find something in here that's really that's really going to help you to be a real head start course. Okay. Again, I'm going to keep going here for a while. Okay. But I've already outlined my whole paper. I just need to find some sources to back it all up. I hear this all the time. This is where you make a paper hard for. If you've already completely committed to what you're writing about and the last step is the research, good luck with that. Bad idea. That's going to be really hard. Let me give you an example. I'm going to write an article about a basketball game and I'm going to write the article first. Then I'm going to watch the recording of the basketball game. You better hope the basketball game goes the way that you wrote that article or you're going to have a really hard time. That's what it's like doing this. Instead of going in with a really open mind and looking for what you can find, you've already committed to everything that you have to find. And that is nearly impossible. So I know the assignment you're working on may be forcing you to do this. Some assignments force you to do that. Work with me, set up an appointment with me. We will figure it out. I will help you figure this out. Okay. Said this a million times, but let the research guide you. Do some re basic research before committing to what you're going to write about. Other philosophical issues that might be making this difficult. Don't search for the paper you're writing. You write that paper. I see this all the time. Well, it's going to be, and I have this great idea for a paper, but I can't find any articles. That's because you have an original idea. You're going to write that it doesn't exist yet. Don't look for your paper. Look for things that are interesting and can add to your perspective, but your paper doesn't exist yet. That's natural. That's normal. Don't try to find exactly your paper. You're going to write this original take on the research that's out there. That's the way it's supposed to work. Your paper doesn't exist yet. It shouldn't surprise you that you're not finding it. It doesn't exist. It's going to, it's going to exist when you're done writing it. Meet the requirements for the scholarly sources, but use other sources too. We talked about this earlier. Don't limit yourself just to scholarly sources. Go deeper on your issue. Don't stay at the surface level. Probably the most important secret. Go deeper. Peer-reviewed articles don't deal with basic issues. They deal with deep issues. How can you... On your topic, what could you incorporate psychologically from this? Look deeper. Don't just look for current events or something in scholarly art articles. You won't find it. In your library alone, we talked a little bit about this. How does it work? It's a free service. Order it in. It doesn't cost you anything. Will an ILO request ever be turned down? Yes. If we're relying on other libraries who own these things to try to get these in for you, it sends out to a network of all these little libraries all over the place. If no one owns your item or if no one is willing to send us a copy of it, we can't do it. Or if it costs too much. If, if, if a library says, yeah, we'll send this to you for $100, we're not going to order it anyway. Okay. Why do I have to wait to get the request? This goes out to a network of all these libraries, and then we have to wait for one of them to respond to send it back. We can't force them to respond quickly. So uh, all things considered, it will make your life easier to use our databases first and interlibrary alone only if you need to. You have an assignment due every week in your courses here. It can take sometimes a week or more to get an article through interlibrary loan. Don't rely on this. I know a lot of students just Google, 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 and then try to order every article into interlibrary loan. You're going to have to wait for every source you order. It's a good service. Plan ahead. Start ordering articles for your portfolio if you're going to do that. Okay. Some areas of the library website you might not know about, library handouts. Here's some quick guides to things, okay? The Writing Center is awesome, and it's a huge compendium of APA stuff. Let's say you just need some quick APA tips. APA Reference Citation Guide. Here's a quick, just a few-page guide that just gives you uh, templates that shows you how these citations should work. Okay, what if the article has two authors, more than two authors? I have this printed out. I keep it in a folder by my desk. I refer to it all the time. This is like the greatest hits of APA. It just gives you quick, 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 quick views of what this stuff is. Here's an APA parenthetical citation guide. Uh-oh, we got a cat joining the meeting, starting to walk in front of the camera. You might see a cat's tail here. Again, quick. the Writing Center has the best guides for this, but this just gives you the quick, quick version of this. This cat's name is Boris. He loves it when I have meetings in here because he loves to hear people talking, and he says, what's, what's going on here? Okay. 
just jump through a few other things. I, again, I really appreciate everyone hanging out. Individual sessions, we talked about this. You wanna get it, book an individual session with me right here, individual sessions. You book here, this is gonna load a form where you tell me your name, your email address, what time zone you're in. I gotta have a cat sitting on my lap here. He's, he's joining the meeting. Okay, this guy, he's a beautiful cat here. Oh, okay, and then what will happen with this after you fill this out? Oh, well, maybe not have time for this APA citation for database articles. We'll do it quick if you wanna hang out. If you, if you uh, request a meeting with me, what I will do then is send you a meeting a meeting invitation for you to accept. Then I'll send you a little reminder saying, hey, we're meeting at this time. Does that work? Then at that time, you just click on the Zoom link and we meet for as long as you wanna meet, okay? Um, a lot of you probably know about this. In the databases, another thing they can help you with is citations, okay? We're gonna really quick, we're gonna jump in here. We're gonna grab an article. I'm gonna show you really, really quickly. Let's open this up here. And again, we have how two videos on this on the library page too. Right here, if we scroll down site, I'm gonna look for an APA citation. There we go. I'm copy this. I'm gonna paste this in here. Okay, now look at this weird gray background. So just copying and pasting is not enough. I'm gonna take this, click on that little clipboard. I'm gonna to go to the middle here with that blue arrow. It takes off the weird formatting, okay? Now, look at this. If you've worked in APA, you know only the first letter of these, of these, uh, of these words should be capitalized, or only the first word should be capitalized, unless we have some kind of a proper noun, or unless we are having a subtitle after the colon. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna highlight this, hold down my control key, highlight everything that should not be capitalized. I'll probably leave COVID capitalized. Probably gonna uncapitalize that. I mean, that should still stay capitalized. Roll, boom, boom. Now here's a little trick on my keyboard, shift F3, boom, uncapitalized. Capitalized, uncapitalized, capitalized, uncapitalized. There we go, okay? Okay, this, uh-oh, I missed one. Grab this, shift F3. Okay, here's the journal, that is all capitalized. Now, we need that hanging in debt, don't we? We're gonna highlight all this. Here's the little magic arrow right here. Boom, click that. Special indentation, hanging indent. And there we go. So it's a great thing to use as long as you know you're going to have to make some edits. There is on the uh, library and the how-to videos, in the APA section, there's a video that shows you how to do this. APA citations of database articles, everything I just showed you and more. Okay. okay, buy an APA manual. It's right here. These APA hints that we have online, they're great, buy this. This is so useful. There's so much in here. Okay, it is so worth it. It costs about 40 bucks. It's so worth it, I refer to it every day. There are so many little exceptions that you are not going to find in, on any website about this. You need this look at these exceptions. I'm gonna really recommend this highly. Okay, it protects you. If you have cited something, it's, you know what? Sometimes an instructor is wrong. You ever had that experience? You turn in a paper, you get graded down for something that you know your formatting is right, okay? You don't have this, you say, well, gosh, I my last teacher didn't grade me down on it. So that doesn't help. If you have this, you look up the section and the page where that rule is in here. You get back in touch with your instructor and you say, in section 5.6 in the APA 7th edition manual on page 240, it lists this rule. I consulted this rule, it's correct. If you're right, nobody can argue with you. It protects you. This is the book of law, okay? You need this, okay? I would recommend, again, the spiral-bound version. Now, the spiral-bound version, because it has these little tabs on the side, and it makes it really easy to flip through the different sections. Without the tabs, it's, it's kind of hard to find. I love these little tabs, okay? We can't get an online version for the library. We've tried, and APA doesn't want that because they would miss out on sales. They want to sell as many of these as they can. They also have it available in an ebook, but they won't let us get a, a version for all of our students, unfortunately. Woo! We're still going here. Let's talk about some basic Google tricks. Google Advanced Search. We have a link to this in uh, databases A to Z. If you go to G, Google Advanced Search right here. Do all kinds of neat stuff with this. If you want to use Google, that's great. I don't have any problem using Google, but let's have a little guidance for how we're using Google, okay? To type this in here. This totally changes how Google works. Cybersecurity, okay. 
and let's go down and we're going to say, okay, I want it like a database. I want it to be anywhere in the page, only in the title of the page, just like a database. Okay. I'm going to scroll down here. File type. How about I just look for PDFs? That means either it was published as an article or as a brochure, something about it. Someone bothered to create a print version of it. And let's say site or domain. Let me just look at government sites, .gov. .gov. Okay, now I'm taking the steering wheel. Look at this. This will happen when you start using Google Advanced Search because a lot of most people don't know how to do this. When it does this, it triggers Google. Uh oh, you're suspicious. You know how to use Google. You're not supposed to know that. How did you know that? You think you're a robot. I am not a robot. Okay, here we go. Now look at these sources we're getting now. These are all from different government websites. When I click into this, it brings up this PDF. Ooh, a whole book. Look at this. This is great. This is a lot better than just standard Google searching. Okay. Now, notice something up here. You can do all this type of searching even without this. You can do it just on the fly. Here we go. All in title. If I was doing some searching other, or other I'll do this again. Cybersecurity. See, I've run these searches before. Cybersecurity. This is no fun. It's letting me do it. Let's do a brand new one. So I'm not just doing this. That's too easy. All in title. Uh, let's say, um, hey, let's go crazy. Dropout. I'm using those quotation marks. You can do some of those databases. Dropout. Let's do um, site. Let's look for education websites. It doesn't have to just be gov. Okay. Let's see what we get here. Okay, so we get now we're getting websites with all dropout from college and all from education websites. These are going to be a lot better than just looking at your standard dot coms, and it's going to look a lot better when you turn these in for site sites for your instructor. Okay, let's do. <clears throat> you could change it. Let's go dot gov. Okay, you could get you could, and now they're all coming from government websites. You could also get. Let's get really specific here. What's the department? What's the U.S. Department of Education? What's their? See, I'm having so much fun. I don't want to stop this. I don't want to do this the rest of the day. I'm having the best time in the world. It was great. Hey, www.ed.gov. That's the Department of Education's website. You can go as specific as even going to a web, a specific website. I bet that website is huge. Ed.gov. Now let's search. Okay. These are all from the Department of Education. You have 225 results just from the Department of Education. Okay, on dropouts. Okay, isn't that great? This is this is great. This transforms Google into a database for you. This is taking the steering wheel with Google instead of just diving in and hoping you get something good. Okay, so in these little tricks, let's see if they have any PDFs. File type. I like PDFs because they're since they're basic or they're articles. Yeah, here we go. Let's see if they give us the full thing here. Here we go, let's bring up an article. What does this look like? Now Google's starting to act like a library database. Okay, it's great. I use this all the time. And again, in our library handouts right here, I probably have this open several times already. Here's the Google Advanced Search Shortcuts. You open this up, print this baby out, save it to your computer. Look at all these little shortcuts I have on there. For you. It teaches you all of this stuff. This is the secret to using Google effectively. Okay, there's file type PowerPoint, PPT. I'm I'm so sorry, Paul. I'm having such a good time. I, no, I, I haven't had this much fun. I'm, you are really going down the rabbit hole. I'm not stopping you at all. I was just going to warn you that you're going to put us out of business. So you're showing them all your tips and tricks and oh, how to do everything. Now, how to videos, awesome. go to how to videos, Google tips. There's a video that shows you all this as well as, as, well as those that, that list of shortcuts. Okay. What else do we got to cover here? We've got all this. We've done all this. Be prepared for the Are You a Robot quiz, uh, which for some reason I have a hard time uh, passing that. Maybe they know something I don't. Anyway, okay. There's the guides to it. Okay, there's the one-on-one -on -one session. We talked about that. <laughs> oh, we made it to the end. Paul, do we have time for more questions? Wow. Wow. I think we have time for questions. Does anybody else have any questions? For those of you who stuck with us, thank you so much. 20 of you, wow. hardcore library researchers, thank students, you. 
Um, they were looking for, um, somebody was looking for uh, a place to buy the APA manual and, and whether or not the, the bookstore here and the CSU Global sells the APA manual, which I don't know if they do or not. That's a good question. I don't know. You know, I know you can find it through Amazon or any other, pretty much any place that you're going to buy books. Yep. Yep. You can get it directly through the APA website. You can get it directly through Amazon. I don't know if it's available through the CSU Global uh, Bookstore, but it's it's very easy to find if you can't find it there. And there's no reason you have to buy it. Right. And there's, yeah, and there's, and you can, there's rented op, rental options, but you can also buy used copies that are fairly reasonable if yeah. you wanted to go that route. Yeah. Um, I don't think I have any other questions. Everybody has really benefited from this. I'm getting a lot of really great feedback. Somebody said, they're very informative and answered many questions I've had the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Jeff, for doing this. I really appreciate it. I know folks have really got a lot out of it. I've gotten a lot out of it. And then cool. I don't know if I live as much in the library as you do, but I felt like I knew a lot, but I've just grown a lot more cool. in my knowledge base of how to use the library, where to go for specific resources that I can then now point to students and go down that rabbit hole myself. Great. Well, this was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And uh, thanks for uh, being okay, even when my cat joined the meeting. That was that was good too. They, you know, they're always welcome. I don't think that I have any other questions. Okay. Thanks if you, again, if you Jeff. Schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me. Uh, you probably will see cats in the meeting. I hope you're not allergic. That's totally all right. They're welcome. <laughs> they're like in the it's like like being in the library or a bookstore. Right. There's usually a bookstore cat or a library cat, maybe. Right. Thank you, Jeff. I really cool. appreciate it. Thank you for all great. of those, of all of you who've joined us and, and stuck around. Uh, there are other webinars that will be coming up in the next months. In April, we'll be having a webinar about Turn It In. So mm -hmm. definitely plan to attend that because um, there's going to be a lot of questions, I'm sure, about originality reports and, you know, all the bells and whistles that come with Turn It In and uh, detecting any plagiarism and not necessarily that, just how to uh, quote and cite sources and how to really navigate that that system. But thank you, Jeff. Yeah, this has been great. Cool. This is great. Okay, talk to everyone later. See you later. All right. Thank you all so much for joining us. Bye-bye.